Okay, in this section we're going to talk about permutations and combinations. I'll do the combinations in the next video. Before we can get into uh, permutations and combinations, we need to uh, talk about uh, something called factorial. Basically factorial, so if you see something like 5 with an exclamation point, it's not an excited 5. It basically means when you see that, it basically means you multiply 5 times the number 1 less than it, then the number 2 less than it, then the number 3 less, and so forth, until you get down to 1. So 5 factorial is just 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And here's some others down here. 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 24. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. 2 factorial is 2 times 1. 1 factorial is simply 1. And 0 factorial is defined to be 1 because us mathematicians do some weird stuff sometimes. So we just decided 0 factorial would be 1 because it makes the math work. Now, in calculating factorials, you can use some tricks. Uh, before I get into this, let me just tell you, there's actually a factorial key on most calculators. So you could go to YouTube and just do a simple search for factorials on the calculator to find uh, how to find that factorial key. But if you're doing it by hand, here's a couple of little tricks you can do. 10 factorial is actually the same as 10 times 9 factorial. This is 9 factorial. So if you had 10 factorial, rather than saying, um, rather than calculating 10 factorial, if we're dividing by 9 factorial on the bottom, you could just break 10 factorial up into 10 times 9 factorial, and then uh, you can cancel the factorials, the 9 factorial, and just get 10. You can even take that a step further. If you have a large factorial on top and one that's just a little bit smaller than it on bottom, you can multiply this factorial down until you get to the, this factorial, 7. So I can write 10 factorial as 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial. Then I have the 7 factorials that can cancel, so my answer is just 10 times 9 times 8, which is 720. The factorial operation must come first, so make sure you don't do something silly like to think 3 factorial times 4 factorial is 12 factorial. It's not true. 3 factorial times 4 factorial would be 6 times 24, which is 144. Same for division. 4 factorial over 2 factorial is not 2 factorial. You have to do the factorials first. So 4 factorial is 24, 2 factorial is 2, and 24 over 2 is 12. I've already talked about how you can use a calculator to find factorials. Now, a factorial is really just a multiplication principle problem. Um, and you're, it's where you're using all of the objects. So, in the previous section, we asked a question like, how many three-letter code words could you make from the first nine letters? Well, what if we change that to how many nine-letter code words you can make from the first nine letters without repetition? Um, that's important. Okay, so you'd have nine choices for your first letter, and since there's no repetition, eight choices for the second letter, seven choices for the third letter, and so on. So you could say you'd have nine ways for the first letter, eight for the second, seven ways for the third, six for the fourth, and so on, all the way down till you get to the last letter where you're only left with one letter. Now, so that would be actually, if you look at that, that's actually nine factorial. Another example here is suppose you had eight amino acids and you wanted to know how many ways you could arrange them in order. Well, there's eight ways to put the first place amino acid. Then there's that leaves seven for the second amino acid and six ways to, you know, line up the third amino acid. Then that leaves five amino acids for the next place, four for the next place, three for the next place, and two times one for the last place. So that would be 8 factorial. So you can see these factorials are simply uh, closely related to the multiplication principle. Now, 
these factorials up here are actually permutations. And let's talk about permutations. So what is a permutation? Okay, let's start with an example. Suppose we take the word math, and we want to know how many two-letter code words without repetition, again, that's important, we could create. So that means that I, I wouldn't use MM or AA. So let's look at the exhaustion method here where I just try every possibility. Uh, I could make a code word MA or AM or MT or TM or MH or HM or AT or TA, HA, I mean AH, HA, TH or HT. Now that gives me 12 code words. Notice that MA and AM are different code words even though they use the same letters. That's important to, to remember. Okay, so each one of these are permutations. So there are 12 two letter, there's 12 two letter permutations of those four letters. Now this leads to a definition for permutation. A permutation is a set of distinct, uh, permutation of a set of distinct objects is an arrangement of the objects in a specific order with no repetition. So you don't have repetition here. So in the above example where I had math, MA is an arrangement of two of the four objects and AM would be another arrangement of those same two letters. So each of the 12 code words is actually a different two-letter permutation. Okay, here's another example that I did by the exhaustion method. Let's list all the three object permutations of the set 7364. Okay, so if you look here, I took the letter, the number 736, and I wrote every way that I could arrange 7, 3, and 6. So there's six ways I can arrange them. Then I took the numbers 7, 6, 4, and I arranged them all the different ways. Then I took 7, 3, 4, did the same thing. Then I took 3, 6, 4, and did the same thing. So if you count this, there's 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6. There's 24 permutations. So there's 24 permutations. Now, you actually could have figured this out from the, uh, from the multiplication principle because there would be four ways to choose the first letter, number, excuse me, and then three ways to choose. That would leave you with three numbers for the second choice, and then that would leave you with two numbers for the third choice, and then four times three times two is 24. But again, we can actually do this with a permutation formula, which we'll get to in a minute. Now, one thing I need to say, if repetition was allowed, I would have ran out of room, but there would have been 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64 possibilities. But those wouldn't be considered permutations, because in that case, you'd be allowing repetition. Uh, here's another one. Suppose a police officer must line up six people for a witness to identify the perpetrator. How many ways can the police officer line them up? Ask yourself a couple of things. Can the people be repeated? And that's no, because you know, that would be silly. You can't put the same person in, in two positions. So repetition is not allowed. And then ask yourself, is order relevant? Well, of course it is, because if you didn't switch the order of your uh, lineups, then everybody would, would, the word would get out and people would know that the criminal is always on the far right or something like that. So this is a permutation question, and we can solve it with multiplication. You, you pretend like you have five spots, so you want to say, how many ways can I fill in, put a person in the first spot? Five ways. How many ways can I put a person in the second spot? Four ways. How many ways can I put a person in the third spot? Three ways. How many ways can I put a person in the fourth spot? Two ways. And then after that, how many ways are my left to fill the fifth spot? Well, there's only one left. So that would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. I just realized here, I said 6 up here, and I only did 5 down here. So that's my bad. Let's just change this number to 5, and then it, it actually works out. So um, sorry about that. Okay, so now um, 
the keywords without repetition and specific order are important. Okay, so read this part right here and let me go ahead and go to the permutation formula. There's actually a formula for permutations. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the special case where you want to arrange all of your objects. So in other words, you have n objects and you want to know how many ways to arrange n of them. Well, that's always going to be n factorial. If you go back up here um, to the to the um, nine letters that we were making a nine letter word out of, well, there that was basically going to be that was basically nine letters and we wanted to know how many permutations of nine are possible and that's just nine factorial. Same thing with the amino acids. We had eight amino acids and we wanted to know how many eight amino acid chains we could make and that was eight factorial. Okay, so again, this is a special case where you're taking all of the objects. Now, you don't have to take all of the objects, but in these examples, that's what I'm going to do. Suppose you only have nine players on a baseball team, and you want to turn in a batting order. Well, you have nine batters to put in on the list, and you have nine players. So basically, you want to know how many ways you can arrange nine out of nine. So that would be 9p9, which is 9 factorial, and you can get a calculator to figure out and see what, that's 362,280. Um, if you had six horses and you wanted to know how many ways they could finish, you could do 6p6, which is 6 factorial, which is 720. And then I already talked about this example with the amino acids. Okay, now what if you're not taking six? What if you're taking, I mean, what if you're not taking all n of them? What if you're taking less than n? Like maybe you're taking r. You only want to know how many um, r element uh, arrangements there are out of n. Okay, for example, suppose there are six horses in a race, but you only want to know how many ways the top four horses could finish rather than all six. Okay, well, then that would be, we would use this formula. You have 6 factorial, you'd have 6 factorial on top over 6 minus 4 factorial on bottom. So that would be 6p4, 6 factorial over 2 factorial, which actually is going to be 360. And you can do these permutations on a calculator as well. All you have to do is, again, go to YouTube and do a little search on how to do permutations on a calculator. And you can freeze the video and read this as well to see how to do that. Now I want to finish up, just show you a couple of permutations. Um, 7p2 would be 7 factorial over 7 minus 2 factorial. And you can do the little trick here where you write 7 factorial as 7 times 6 times 5 factorial. Then cancel the 5 factorials and get 7 times 6 is 42. Uh, two examples here. How many ways can the first three places be awarded in a race of eight contestants? So, um, let's see. Oh, that's five. Should be five contestants. Sorry. Okay, so how many, so out of five contestants, we want to know how many three uh, contestant arrangements are possible because the order would matter because if you're keeping place of the places, then first, second, and third place identifies the order to matter. So that would be 5 factorial over 5 minus 3 factorial, which is 5 factorial over 2 factorial. And then you can use your little tricks to cancel the 2 factorial and get 5 times 4 times 3, which is 60. Also, another example would be how many ways can the position of president and vice president be assigned from a group of 8 people? Well, that would be um, 8 people total, and you're choosing 2, but the order is important. So that makes this be a permutation problem. And by the way, both of these can be used. We can use the permutation formula on both of these because there's no repetition would not make sense on these. So this would be 8 factorial over 8 minus 2 or 6 factorial. And then you can do the little trick here where you write it as 8, 7, 6 factorial. And then cancel the 6 factorials and 8 times 7 is 56. 
I'm going to have to uh, pick this back up on the next video. So on the next video, I'll also do this and combinations.